Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're continuing on our pandemic projects. Today I've got actually three Shimano Stratix that have come in. These are from uh, Pat. And uh, Pat said uh, it's a project he would normally take on. He's just asking me to, uh, to kind of tune the reel up. He said he would normally take this project on, but he's got uh, a couple of toddlers at home that are taking the uh, uh, priority today. And he asked me if I just couldn't tune them up for you. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to do that. We'll show you how to do that. And while I start to take off the external parts, I want to thank all of our first responders, essential personnel, and so on, that are working to keep us safe during the pandemic. I really do appreciate everything it is that you do. And I certainly uh, uh, thank everybody that's doing that, uh, trying to keep us all safe as we go through trying to fight this horrible disease. I, uh, I like to start by taking off the handles and that. In this case, I was just checking to make sure that we didn't have a through screw. And uh, that means that we can reverse the handle here and bring this one out. So this has a gearing uh, inside. It has a threading inside the main gear. That's what we just took off there. We're going to remove the uh, spool next. I'm going to back off the drag tensioners until we can pull that off. Then we want to remove the shim washers for the spool and the click rotor that lets you know that the drag is working in, uh, when it's pulling out the line. You can usually just kind of pull this up and out. Sometimes as you said, then you've got to walk it up. There we go. So these two shim washers are pretty tight to the post and they uh, you, you want to note when you're doing this how many are on there. That controls the line height on your spool. And we have two. Usually we have three. Uh, usually Shimano will include additional drag washers if you're buying the real new. Uh, or spool washers rather. And uh, if you're spooling too high on the reel, which is kind of what's happening here. Kind of looks like maybe you only need two. I'm going to leave that to Pat. He's been doing it a while. But if you have more up top and less on the bottom, it usually means that you have too many washers in. And if you have too much on the bottom and not enough on the top, it means you have too few. Uh, he's got the three in there. I'm going to leave it at that. It's, it's not terrible, but I think he probably could do with removing one of those. All right, take the spool washer out and take this one out. That's going to leave us to the uh, rotor nut. And the rotor nut comes off. Let's see which way it comes off. It comes off in the, in the reverse thread, so it's coming off in a clockwise direction. And you want to, when you're doing this, you want to be gentle in that first little one, go which you would normally think would be it, which is to the left, counterclockwise. If you're finding out it's not moving or it's moving very slow, just do the same to the right and see which one has the give uh, if you don't know. All right, we're going to take the uh, rotor off then. It just simply pulls off and you don't need to do anything here this is <laughs> this is one that's got a lot of people in trouble they seem to want to take this anti-reverse off for whatever reason and uh, it just springs as a series of rollers under here it just springs and causes all kinds of concern this is just general maintenance so we're going to just put a drop of oil in there to, to make sure that that bearing is is clear but uh, it always always kind of find it amazing when people want to just do those kinds of things. All right, so uh, in order to get the bottom cap off, you've got to remove the bump cap, and you have to remove this screw from the handle, which is why you had to take that rotor off to begin with. So I use a micro screwdriver for that. They're pretty finely, or pretty small. And it's a good time to tell you, if you're doing your project like this, take pictures along the way. Clearly, I'm taking pictures here with the video, but uh, take uh, take a video if you like, uh, take still photos, use a cell phone camera, use a digital camera, you, gosh, use a film camera, go get your film developed if you want, I guess, if you can still find a place to do that. But uh, take pictures. That way it's going to tell you where the uh, pieces and parts go should you get stuck. Those are the two screws. They're different in, in size and shape. And uh, make sure you note them before you go and put them in a parts tray, which is what I'm using in the back here, to do that. Now, I haven't taken the schematic out for this reel. Uh, if I 
gets stuck along the way, I'll certainly go and get it. But I recommend if you're first time at doing this reel, that if you uh, need to try and find out where those schematics and pieces and parts go, uh, schematic is your best answer. Now you don't have to take this screw off here. I've gotten reels in the bag where people do take that off. There is a, um, a bar that is under here that is controlling the oscillating uh, movement. And if you take that out, that bar is going to fall out. Uh, but again, for a general tune-up, you don't need to do that. And the reason we took that rotor off is we, if you take this brake off, you're going to see that there's two case screws that are under here. So you need to gently pry these up so that you get access to those case screws. And this is a brake that uh, doesn't do anything short of keep the spool running true. It's a little round uh, washer. Notice that if we do take this thing off completely, that your uh, points on this are going up. There's all these little things that happen when you do wheel repair that you just got to be aware of. Otherwise, if you go to put it in, you put it in upside down, backwards, or whatever, it won't have the same effect as it was initially designed for. So just pay attention as you do this. Nothing in uh, real repair, I think, is extremely difficult. It's just a matter of, of following a process and making sure that uh, you note how, how they came out in sequences and the like. All right, so we have that off. We'll take this, bring this up. And I think I'll take this off anyway, just to show everybody. So there's two screws here. I'm going to hope that we get this right. There's two screws here. Do not remove. Those are holding the bearings in place, if I got this right. And there are three that are holding it onto the case. So let's get adventurous and see if we got this right. This is in case you have to re... Uh, remove this bearing for any kind of servicing and the like. And I have actually had to go in and rebuild these bearings and I've actually got these things in a bag with the rollers separate from the case. So there's a series of springs in that and like I said if you don't have to it literally is like uh, opening up a can of worms. So that should remove the anti-reverse. You can see the roller bearings inside there. And again don't take those two screws off because that is going to release those bearings. All right, we have an assembly now that we can pull out, and that's why I wanted to take that out. There's a collar. Notice this. I get this question all the time. I, I serviced my reel, and now the anti-reverse doesn't work. You have a high side and a low side. There's two different dimensions on this cap. And that's why I say take pictures, because a lot of times folks will turn it around You'll have the small side up and the wide side down, and then it doesn't grip the roller bearings. So it goes high side is the fat side. All right, I'm just going to set that off to the side for a moment. We'll pull the bearing off here. I want to just clean up the old grease. I'm going to start with a paper towel. See how much of that I can wipe off. I'm just taking the towel and I'm taking my fingernail and running it through the grooves to see what I can clear out. You can also use a little pick. Some people have asked me about this pick. It's, it's not a commercial tool. What it is, is it's the bottom end of an electric probe used for circuit testing in uh, automobiles. So if you want to go buy one, just go buy the circuit tester, screw it out from the bottom of the tester and uh, you'll have a pick that replicates the one I have. So, I uh, this wasn't my go-to choice. I had this little guy forever, and I misplaced it, and I was in a panic. This this one was from a um, uh, five-in-one tool. It was a little awl that connected into a screwdriver handle, and I, uh, I lost that and had to go find a substitute. I found this, and then I found my, my original again. And this one, the point is just a little thinner on so it can get in all the grooves. While you're doing this, make sure that all of the teeth are uniform, that they're not chipped or broken or bent. And then uh, once you do that, grab some fishing reel grease. It doesn't have to be Shimano. In this case, I'm going to use pen precision reel grease. 
get the grease back onto that pinion gear, get it, make it healthy. It's probably going to be a while before it sees service again. Get some oil onto the bearing. We can put the bearing back onto the shaft so we don't lose that. We can put the collar back on with the fat side up so that we remember how that goes. Then we can just set that aside for a moment as we open up the case. And take those three screws that hold the uh, anti-reverse on and put those to the side. And then we can open up the case. Now, as I mentioned, you had to go through all of that effort to get these two screws up top in addition to the two below uh, open. Now this is a fun case because you're going to take all the screws out of this side and you're going to think that this is the side that's going to come off and it's not. It's the back side that's going to come off of this. So hold it like I'm holding it so that when it does come off you have it in your hand. Otherwise it may spill out and it will cause you uh, maybe some alarm. Alright, so I'm noticing right away that the screws up top are shorter than the screws that came out on the bottom. Again, you got to make that, uh, you got to notice that. Otherwise, when you go to reinstall, it'll be incorrect. I'm also noticing that we have a little spring here that's controlling the anti-reverse override. Just noticing the orientation on it in case it pops. Springs have a tendency to do that. And try and leave it there and not touch that anti-reverse override because it's not something that's needed in a basic service. You only want to get in there if you have to replace that spring. Okay, so we have, interestingly enough, we have three screws that are the same size and only one that is shorter. Shimano's kind of famous for that, it seems. So three are the same size and one is short. And we remember that the short one came from the upper right-hand corner. And uh, you need to pay attention and not just uh, take the screws off and put them into the tray. With those four screws out, I believe we should be able to take this side plate off now. As I mentioned, it's kind of a weird setup for that, but that's kind of the way they do it. This is the post I was referring to before. It's a guide post for your worm and your paw. And the... Uh, if you pull the screw out of the case here, that post is going to slide down and uh, it's going to create issues. This little piece is the ramp for the bail trip that came out of the case. We'll show you how to reset that when it's, when it's time to go do that. All right, I'm just going to grab the micro screwdriver, take this out, and put a drop of oil onto the pawl, which is riding up and down. So this oscillating system is different from most oscillating systems on a uh, spinning reel in that it operates like the oscillating system on a bait caster, a worm drive. If you can picture it in this position, moving the spool up and down as the line guide is going here. So that's kind of what this system does in this particular reel. All right, I took that off then. We can get this cover off. And there's two things on the cover that you need to pay attention to. There's a little plate and there's a little washer, followed by your pawl. So let's get that oiled. And I'm going to oil the worm gear behind it. Then you have this little white washer here. Probably seen on my tip. That goes in next. That, that provides a little bit of a, a play for that paw moving up and down. There's a little stud on the back end of that paw. And then the cap goes on next. I'm trying to get this on and show at the same time. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do here, but I will get it done. There we go. Just lining the hole up now. And we'll grab, hopefully we'll be able to grab this screw. Put a little grease on the end of my screwdriver here, see if I can't hold it that way. I don't do well with small parts. And 
and then we'll just put it in there, tighten that back up. So that's your service of your, your worm gear, your oscillating gear, the pawl, and so on. Let's go over to the main gear. Two bearings, this will be for a little wheel, two bearings, one on each side. They get oil. And we have some accumulated oil grease on the back of the, the wheel here, which doesn't do any good. So I'm going to take all of that out. I'm going to oil both bearings. To make sure that all the teeth are in good condition. Just on a quick check, this wheel uh, drive is fine. I'm going to go back to the fishing wheel grease and make sure we get grease into the, the teeth there. This one was riding a little rough, probably because it didn't have a lot of grease on it as we saw. Now we're all greased up again. And we can just go ahead and slide this in then. Put that bearing in the back of the case there. Put our main gear on. Grab the, the case. Actually, give the pad a little favor here. I'm going to use Purple Power, which is a general degreaser. I'm just going to get some of that sweat and other stuff off the case here, including some of the grease that I was using there. And a Purple Power is a concentrated degreaser, so you don't need to use a lot of it. And if you're using it at full strength, it usually just kind of takes it right off, as you can see here. Just give it a nice cleaning there. Just cut the swap to the back there. Did we get this side? So let's go ahead and do that side too. If it was particularly stubborn, you could use a kitchen scrubby to uh, to get that off. But that doesn't it does a nice job. And no, that's not a paid endorsement. I just use it because I like it. And uh, let's go get those side plate screws in, remembering that one of them is shorter than the other. So the first thing is to find that short screw. And that short screw goes up top right. We can get it with this screwdriver. Nope. Oh, I told you I was going to show you how to put that little piece in, and I didn't. And I won't be able to put it in later, so let's go back and do that again. Okay, take the case off. There's a little tag here that slides into the the groove, and then when you're going to put this on, there's a corresponding groove on this side. Now we got it. That's your ramp for your uh, bail trip. And go ahead and put the side plate screws in, short one up top right. And sometimes these folks do this just because there's limited clearance in one versus the other. So that's why you, you're seeing that. Shimano seems to, to do that more than some other manufacturers, so just pay attention to it. I've seen them where um, somebody's put the wrong screw. I showed you the two screws for that bump card. I've seen it where somebody's put the wrong screw in here. Right behind here is that post that controls the um, the up and down oscillation guide and uh, that screw it interfered with the guide. It went in too far in the case and the uh, the guide wouldn't work. It wouldn't travel down. And they were, then they came to me and said, well gee, why, why, what is the real stop here? Well, it stopped there because the wrong screw was in the case and it was acting as a, a stop. Okay, now we'll put this last one in here. We'll go back and grab that uh, spool brake uh, washer, whatever they want to call that uh, big black thing. I'm just going to get this off. This stuff is slippery. I don't know. I heard lye is in there. I'm not sure what else is in there, but it's slippery. 
All right, the washer goes next, points up, as we noted when we were doing this. I like to start by getting it behind that trip lever because that's the most difficult part to get out. So generally, if you can get it in that way, it'll work best. There you go with that. And uh, since I'm pretty much done with the, the greasy part, I'm going to take this glove off now because it's transferring residual greases in that to the case, and I want to keep that case clean. So take that glove off for the rest of the reassembly here. Just a little bit of dirt behind where that handle mounts, so let's get that out of there. A little bit of dirt here, so we'll make sure it's nice and clean. All right, next up then is that pinion gear assembly. So in case we've forgotten along the way, we've greased the, the pinion. Have the bearing is next. We have the collar with the, the thick side or fat side up. And the one piece I don't have a little bit of grease on is what nestles into that bottom carrier. So let's get a little bit of grease on that. We can slide all of that over the spool shaft at this point. And we can put a drop of oil on that axle shaft just so that uh, it works its way down and stays smooth. Next up then is the anti-reverse. We have three screws. Generally on this anti-reverse, there's going to be one section there on the bottom that's going to correspond with this little stud here, which is the override. So make sure when you go to install that, you match that up. And it should be able to just slip in nicely like that. And we'll grab the three of the screws here. Go ahead and put them in. I think we were able to do that with the larger screwdriver. And then we'll come up and we'll just uh, we'll remount the rotor and we'll take a look at the drag washers in this thing. And then uh, Pat sent me three of these, so I'm going to do three of them. I won't do three videos, but uh, I'll do the next sets of that and we'll move on. Here's your bump guard is next before you put the rotor on. You have that stud that runs through the case here. Uh, put that through. Kind of shift it all up at the same time. You have your short screw and your long screw. Short screw went in on this side. And like I said, I've seen it where somebody's put the long screw in there and it isn't. It will affect the operation. So pay attention. All right, that one's in. Come back here with the micro screwdriver and get this one in. The funny thing is that other screw I believe fits here and people, the guy just couldn't figure out why uh, why the thing was stopping. All right, that takes care of that. Next up then is the rotor. Now we have a trip mechanism here. It's an arm that goes up and down, but it doesn't hurt to put a, a drop of oil onto that. Some are more elaborate with springs and the like in there where you, you, you certainly don't want to miss doing a little lubrication on it. But in this case, it's uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Next up then is the rotor nut. Remember, it came off clockwise, so it goes back on counterclockwise. I like to start them by hand and do as much by hand as I can with that because I don't want to risk cross-tripping it. And we can come back in and tighten it up. Give that reel a spin and it's spinning nicely. Got a little bit of grease on here, so let's get that off. Again, continuing with the do what we can here. Next step then was that little carrier for the spool. The click ratchet. And as I mentioned, we got three. I'm going to tell Pat that he might want to take one of these off because of the way that that spool is gathering. But uh, that's his option. And here's the other beauty of a, a parts tray. You can uh, always check if there's something laying in that parts tray that uh, you thought you were done and there's still a piece in there, then you know that you have to go back and, and kind of redo it. All right, that's the third one. Put the handle on next. Oops. All 
give it a twirl. Going nicely, thank you. Grab the screw cap for the other side. I'm going to put a little drop of oil into the sides of the carriers for the bale. Also on the roller bearing for your line guide. Make sure that that's spinning smoothly. Okay, last part then is to pay attention to the drag. And uh, we're going to just check this. It has felt drags in there if I remember. And it's held in by a retaining ring. So find the two points on the retaining ring that are open sides. And this is a spring. So you want to hold your finger on here to make sure that the spring doesn't shoot as you go to remove it. You can just work something like a pick or a screwdriver or the like until you get it started coming out. And hold that spring so it doesn't shoot. Speaking from experience, they will shoot. That's your little spring. You put that in the container. Notice that the configuration on this drag system is it's got four prongs and, a, uh, and an internal washer kind of thing sitting face up. And the reason I mention that is, is you've got to take this assembly out. It's easy to flip this assembly over and think that that's the top and it's not. That's the bottom. We have a felt, felt washer underneath here. We have a series of felt washers. Just make sure that the cavity is clean. Use a paper towel or something. And these are felt washers. Felt washers get oil. These are very flexible. They've been oiled and taken care of. So just get a little bit on there to maintain that flexibility. And then you basically have a package here. You have a bottom washer, which has the prongs on it. You have another felt washer. And again, these boys have a lot of oil on them. I don't need to do anything with them, and I'm not going to. But uh, if yours were dry or sticking to these, then go ahead and do that. Next one up is a keyed washer, or an eared washer, last of that. And again, if these were dry, you would go put some oil on it, but these have plenty of, of oil. And the only the oil doesn't increase or decrease the drag tension. What it does is it keeps those washers from becoming brittle and breaking. And you want to complete this assembly by taking those four tags or prongs or what have you, putting them back into that order and finding the slots in the spool for those ears to go. And then just aligning that like that. So there you go. That's it's as simple as it is in terms of a drag assembly. Get the spring, get it nestled into a slot. It's a very low tension spring. There are it's not, uh, not a very tight piece of metal at all. You can control that by your hand, but again, keep your finger on it. It is a spring. And you have to get the four corners into those slots, otherwise it won't seat properly. And that just takes a minute or two and some patience. But eventually you do. This is a good time again to say thank you to our first responders. And also, uh, if you have one of these reels and you're not up for servicing it yourself, and you uh, would like somebody to do it, I do repair reels by mail. And uh, if you want, take a look at the business card at the end of this uh, video, and you'll see to contact me. And contact me by email is the best, and I can get you the information on reel repair. So that's been cleaned, oiled, reset. All we have to do is put that onto the reel at this point. Put that drag tensioner back on. Tighten it down, make sure it's ready to go. There you go. Tighten this now. A couple more, just make sure it locks down solid, which it does. Back it off so you don't squeeze the pieces out while it's uh, lying there. That's it. There's your Shimano 3000 FJ. And this one's ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.